The bird is freed. That's what Elon Musk tweeted upon closing the $44 billion Twitter deal that's dominated the headlines now for several months. Musk promptly firing the CEO, CFO, policy head, and general counsel. So what's next for the blue bird? Dan Ives is the managing director and senior equity analyst at Wedbush. Always good to see you, Dan. Uh, so let's first start with this. How much is Twitter worth? And two, this is a twofer, if forced to pay for Twitter, how much would you pay per month? Well, well first off, in terms of what Twitter's worth today, I mean, I think it's worth 20 to 25 billion. So this just comes down to, I think it's gonna be one of the most overpaid, you know, expensive M&A transactions in tech, probably next to AOL Time Warner. Okay, in terms of what he's paying relative to the fair value uh, that we see. Look, and when you talk about monetization, I mean, that's going to be the issue. I mean, Twitter pervasiveness has never been the issue. It's how do you monetize it? And that's going to be the problem for us. The easy part for us was buying Twitter. The hard part is fixing it. Well, Dan, let's talk about fixing it because he's taken some steps over the last 24 hours. A couple of the top executives are gone. He also announced that he's forming a content moderation council with widely diverse viewpoints. I was in a tweet that he just posted a couple of hours ago. But what do you think's in store? What changes do you think need to be made? And it's a balancing act. I think part of the problem is you're trying to get more advertisers on. You want the power users to continue to come up. But then... You, you, you got to make sure that from a content perspective, it's not a cesspool. Because if that's what it becomes, then then ultimately that's been part of the problem for Twitter. It's going to be this tightrope that he's going to have to walk. That's why when he talks about the WeChat type model, the super app in terms of what they have in China over the next three, four years, that's a great vision. But in the near term, it's going to be cost cutting. It's probably going to be more monetization of the core power users. And it's trying to get more advertisers on the platform. But it's the carrot and the stick. You need engagement and subscribers in what right now is just a perfect storm for digital media. How dramatic do you think the headcount reduction is? And you talk about advertisers. Do they want back on a platform if it does indeed welcome former President Trump, Kanye West, Steve Bannon, and the like? I mean, to your latter point, that's part of the problem. That's why I think he put that tweet out today. I mean, otherwise, if you want to spend $44 billion just to make it a town hall and a free-for-all, then you can do that, right? But, you know, I think that's really the issue in terms of that balance that he's trying to strike. And, and I think overall, when you look at the situation here, I mean, the, the headcount cuts are going to be massive. I mean, th this is one, because of the debt, you're, you're now going to have to, from a free cash flow perspective, service that debt, puts more pressure on cost cuts. I'd say 30% on the low end, probably 40 to 50% on the high end. So, Dan, of course, and that begs the question what that's going to do for the culture of Twitter, what that means for Elon Musk, concern there about reputation and his management style. What's your take on that? I mean, you couldn't find in the world two different cultures than Musk and then the Twitter culture. I mean, I don't see too much ping pong going on during lunch when, with Musk uh, running Twitter. And I think that's, look, that's the issue is that it's work for Tesla and it's work for SpaceX. That's why he's the richest person in the world. But now it's trying to make sure morale, keeping employees, resumes not going out, you know, in terms of surge, there's going to be clear cuts. And I think that's really going to be the balance that he's going to need to find to get Twitter through this next chapter. I view it as just a kill Majaro like uphill battle to turn this thing around. I want to turn a little bit to the, the whole week in big tech, Dan. Biggest story of the week to you in terms of what we're learning, whether it's Microsoft or Amazon, uh, Meta being hammered, or Apple just proving resilient let again. I think there's a few things. I mean, first, Facebook, Meta, I mean, that conference call, probably one of the worst I've heard 22 years doing this on the street. That I mean, look, right now, Zuckerberg, it's like uh, Ted Stryker in the movie Airplane. I mean, that's sort of the vibe I think that most investors were getting. Because you're betting on the metaverse. It's three to five years out. And right now, social media and their massive headwinds. So I think that's one that can continue to sell up. Cloud still holding in well, obviously some cracks that we saw with Amazon and Microsoft. The one that comes out smelling like roses, again, it's Cupertino and Cook. I mean, they're the one where demand continues to be firm. And I think in large cap tech, 
I really think Microsoft and Apple are the ones who are going to be getting more dollars. When you take a look at Apple, obviously a huge quarter here, the holiday quarter. The streets impressed with their most recent earnings. Looking, though, ahead to growing their services business, we know we, they just upped their prices on their subscription services. How big of a boost do you see that being to Apple here over the next couple of quarters? Yeah, look, well, it's a great point because I think the big part with Apple in terms of the valuation is that services business. You need that to reaccelerate. Just forget currency for a second because that's about a thousand bit headwind back to organic double digit year of year. And, and I think if you start to get there, and I believe there's that big opportunity, right now services is still 25, 30% penetrated. You have that golden install base. That's really its ability, especially with iPhone 14, still looks strong in terms of overall demand now going into holiday season. But services is the crux. I mean, you need that to really reaccelerate organically. Uh, you know, I think for the street to really start to believe that this is one that can navigate the storm. Last night, a huge step forward in what's been a nightmare in Elm Street week for big tech. And what did we learn from Amazon about what lies ahead? I think it, they definitely have some significant, not just cuts, but I think they're trying to figure out the new normal. On the e-commerce side, clearly, you're seeing some softness going into the holiday season. You still have that COVID hangover that they're going from a growth perspective. And I think there could be some net share gains that Microsoft's going after with Amazon on cloud. But you look at the reaction today, stocks down six and a half percent. Last night it was down 20% after hours. The street's starting to realize now Amazon, maybe they've cleared the deck. Low enough numbers, now you can start to buy the stock. I think you're seeing a similar theme in some of these big cap tech. Meta, you put by the side just because that's more of a train wreck situation. But I do believe some of this, the bark's a little worse than the bite in terms of, you know, where we start to go through in terms of numbers over the next three to six months. Dan, you're repping the Penn State strong, a 15-point dog tomorrow against Ohio State. What's your prediction? Look, I'm here in State College. I mean, obviously, this is probably the best Ohio State team I've seen in 20 years. I think we could do, there could be a shocker in State College tomorrow. I, I think Penn State could win this game. Ooh, can't I'm wait with for you, that. Dan. Noon, <laughs> noon Eastern time. You know what Dan is doing this weekend. Enjoy it, sir. Good I'm luck. here in State College, yep. <laughs> that should be a fun one. Dan Ives from Wedbush. Good Thank to see you, you sir.